madam i have connected everywhere you can start the meeting and please record the meeting varsha madam recording in progress Hello everyone. Good evening. 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 Hello, Doctor Chai. Good to see you. Good evening, Mr. Chai. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chai. Good evening. Hello, Doctor Rajiv. Hello, ma'am. Good evening. Doctor Harshiv. Good evening, ma'am. Welcome to SSPP. Thank you. Hope I am audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Yeah, thank you. I am muting it right now, right? Yeah, yeah. Varsha, ma'am, you can start the meeting. I am not able to see Varsha. Uh. Oh right, in the middle. <laughs> Hi. Ah, was it yellow? Tuza. Okay. So good evening, everyone. And now we are starting this meeting, which is monthly academic activity by Society for the Study of Brain Pune. And we are starting today on the theme. of needling in chronic pain management now i welcome our president dr joy jana to start the meeting welcome joy sir thank you varsha um, on behalf of the society of study of pain pune i welcome you all can you change the six screen to me rahul Yes, sir. Yeah. Put me on the put me on the screen. Yes, sir. It is on speaker view now from my side. The one who has started recording, please make it on a speaker view. What are you recording? And I request everyone, Doctor Ashok, yeah, can you go on mute, please? Excellent. Proceed. Yeah. Are you ready to start the meeting, sir? Yes, Rahul. Put me on the screen. Okay, sir. Sir, you are visible on full screen. I know. I'm not on the screen. Sir, you are visible to us. Varshali, ma'am, can you see him? We yes, we are able to see you. Yes, sir. Okay, Jana, we can see you. Yeah, please uh, go ahead uh, with the screen, full screen. It is yeah. full screen, sir. Yeah, I'll I'll. Sir, first of all, the water is not enough. Somebody is. Uh, See you, Doctor Jana. We can start. Not unmute. Yeah, I have muted him. Yeah. So, on behalf of uh, Society of Study of Pain Pune, I welcome all the delegates and our faculty for this uh, first. Uh, zoom meeting uh, on uh, uh, today's topic we had the first uh, hybrid on craniofacial pain in last month in the month of june and after uh, in the month of may we took it uh, all the at the office bearers so we started this first zoom meeting uh, as our principals we invited our first uh, guest speaker dr rajiv harshay 
Dr. Dr. Rajiv Ashe, welcome. Thank you so much for uh, Rajiv. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us here on uh, Zoom. My pleasure. And, uh, yes, thank you. Rajiv. Thank you, sir. And uh, we always encourage our SSPP members to present along with our faculty members who is presenting today. First is uh, Priya Rati and Dr. Kailash Vakare. Kailash has had a grace that I have never been allowed to speak in our SSPP. Kailash, can you hear? This is the first meeting with our uh, as taking over as a president. I'm allowing you the first time to allow you to speak. So, though he is now settled in Solapur, though he's associated, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he's associated with uh, Pune. Uh, thank you, Kailash, sir, that you have joined uh, with us uh, to present your uh, uh, all, your, all your presentations. And uh, since then, we have started now. Every month, we'll be. Uh, presenting the various clinical meetings in chronic pain. And uh, uh, now I invite our uh, moderator, Dr. Kirti Pawar. Kirti, you are online already. And uh, I'd like to welcome you for this uh, clinical meeting. Kirti is already not only a state uh, or a national, she is an international faculty. She has won so many awards. You can go through this slide. Fantastic. And we are proud that you uh, we, you are a member of uh, Pune, uh, Society of Pain Pune. So she's our moderator for today's uh, uh, presentation. And I hand it over to Dr. Kirti to take the proceedings forward. Kirti, please take it forward. Kirti, you have to unmute yourself. Achha, uh, maybe that setting I did, I will unmute you. Okay, did you get the prompt to unmute? Yeah, yeah. thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to acknowledge my gratitude and thanks towards, towards SSPP for giving me this privilege. We all know that chronic pain is like a jigsaw puzzle. Orthopedicians, rheumatologists, pain physicians, neurologists, and physiotherapists all are trying to join pieces of this chronic pain puzzle. Everyone will be agree with me that there are high number of patients suffering from chronic pain and not able to receive sustainable and one-stop solution to their chronic pain. I think this is high time to understand that chronic pain is not all about joints, bones, and nerves. Muscles are pain expressors and we are sufferers. Ultrasound guided dry needling is gaining high popularity in radiology and rheumatology. So friends, let's, let's expand the horizon of pain management by initiating the topic of discussion, needling in chronic pain. And I'm really honored to invite our first speaker, Dr. Rajiv Harshe. He's an eminent pain consultant from Ahmedabad. He is a pain consultant to Heat Excellency Governor of Gujarat, Director of Relief Pain Clinic Gujarat, Director Dr. Harshe Pain Academy, and pain consultant since 2004. He is a faculty in national and international conferences on pain and author of a book on pain. I invite Dr. Rajiv. Over to Rajiv, sir. Rajiv sir, you can share the screen. Hello, is it okay now? Can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Screen is visible and full screen. And uh, I'm audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I saw the video so that I can concentrate more on the topic, right? Okay. Thank you very much, madam, for uh, uh, inviting me in this first of your online meeting. And uh, regarding the introduction you gave, one small <laughs> rectification. I have just contributed a chapter in a book 
I am not that great that I, I can write a book. But well, uh, thank you very much for all your kind words. And so we begin the topic, first topic, and that is hypodermic medium, a novel treatment. Right. Now, <clears throat> a moment. Why is it not scrolling down? Yeah. Okay. We can see the next slide, sir. Correct, correct. No, I, I was having some problem here. Okay. So the thing is, what is hypodermic needle? Most of the people who must be listening, for them this is a new thing. Yes, because it is something which I coined over a period of time, and it involves inserting routine injection needle, 26 number, half gauge, hypodermic injection needle used for uh, neonates. This needle I use, and it is inserted hypodermically in defined spots of the body to manage pain. Now, the question is, by putting a small needle under the skin, how is it going to work? It works on the principle of gate control theory of pain, and as the PPT will unfold, you will understand how it works. But in a nutshell, it works on the principle of gate control theory of pain. Now, 15 to 20 minutes uh, was a little uh, tight time to speak in detail. So I have touched the common things, and that is the basic one slide tells you a lot about the pain pathway, right? If you see the pain pathway, it starts from a nociceptor in the periphery, which when stimulated, stimulates the apparent nerve fiber, which then relays in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord from where the second order neuron begins, and it goes to the thalamus. From here, the third order neuron goes to the cortex, and we know all about this, right? And there is something called descending inhibitory pathway which has an important role to play. We know about various types of nerve fibers, C, A delta, and A beta being the most commonly discussed and most commonly useful one. Now, the important thing here is, now C and A delta, they are the main contributors in the terms of transmitting pain from the periphery to the center. And A beta has little different role to play. If you see this slide, which I've taken, I'll, I'll acknowledge the Alia uh, medical media, which I've extracted from YouTube. This was a beautiful picture, which could explain a lot of things in a simple picture. If you see here, uh, the blue one which you can see is the A-beta fiber. Now, when this A-beta fibers are stimulated, they stimulate a inhibitory interneuron in the dorsal horn. And this inhibited interneuron then inhibits the conduction from first order neuron to the second order neuron, reducing the influx of the pain. This is what we learn as gate control theory of pain. So now this A beta fiber has tremendous role to play in controlling the pain. Otherwise, when stimulated, there will be constant barrage of impulses coming up, and the level will come which will be intolerable. But this controls the influx. <clears throat> now, when this interneuron is stimulated, it also, uh, I mean, the descending inhibitory pathway and this releases endorphins and endorphins in the dorsal horn. And these endorphins have a lot to do. They again contribute in inhibiting the action potential, right? And they are also commonly seen to be released in the pleasurable activities like excitement, meditation, laughter, vigorous exercise, and we all know the importance of endorphins, right? As I said previously, the spatial interneurons in dorsal column of the spinal cord, which is the yellow one you can see here, when stimulated, control the influx of pain impulses and release endorphin or an antiphilin, which in turn improves the pain control better. <clears throat> 
we know that the existing modality like Chen's and span estimator use this concept, right? Then why should I think of this new modality? Well, what I thought, I may be wrong, but this is what I thought and this is how I went ahead, that the spinal cord stimulator works quite deep in the spinal cord, right? And exactly at the point where it has to act. But it's too costly in, for routine use in India, especially in India, right? Where insurance is not so easily available. Then procedure is definitely high end and many constant vigilance and follow-ups, which in our scenario is little difficult, especially when we talk about the village patient, right? TENS works by superficial approach. It works well, but consistent results, consistent results are not seen in the market, maybe due to various reasons, which include diverse protocol and so and so. So I thought, why not find something intermediate, not too deep, not too superficial, and can I do something about it? Because ultimately I know that it is the A beta which is my helper. And I have to stimulate the A beta. So next step I followed was, why not stimulate A beta fibers peripherally, which are stimulated centrally by spinal cord stimulator. So I tried to study where are their peripheral ends. And when I saw it, they are below the skin and above the muscle. So this picture tells you the whole story. This is the A-beta fiber, right? Just under the skin. <clears throat> they are also called proprioceptive fibers. You must have seen in your routine life that whenever there's a pain in some part, if you just move your hand over that part, very likely you feel better. Or something, somebody presses that part, you feel better. Probably this is the uh, stimulation of A-beta fiber, which probably gives you relief. So these two arrows tell you where are these A-beta fibers. So I thought, again, one very important thing I would like to share, and I would like all uh, listeners, if they are not reading, please go through this book, Acupuncture, Trigger Points and Musculoskeletal Pain by Baldry. What a fantastic book he has written, and he has told a lot of about the trigger points and how if you deactivate these trigger points, then pain is released. So I was more or less, uh, you know, uh, reading this book, and then I thought that from combining these two, can I put needle under the skin and see? And the first patient of hypodermic needling was myself. I had my official chest pain after yoga asana, which I did over enthusiastically. And that pain was not relieved by analgesic for a couple of days. I got everything done and everything was normal. So then I thought, let me do it. And to my surprise, the very next day, I was completely pain free. Even the same thing I have uh, experienced two months back. After 12 years, 10 years of my practice of hypodermic needling, I had dental extraction and the last molar. And after that, the pain was severe. So I took all analgesics and antibodies, blah, blah. I thought five days, maybe seven days, maybe 10 days pain should go. But it was not good. And the dentist had pulled my head on one side and did the job. So even my neck muscles were pulled. So I used my hypodermic needling. I put needles right over the jaw in the sternomastoid, I mean above the sternomastoid and uh, in the neck muscles behind, which my wife helped to do. And you will not do it. Next day, next day, my pain was gone. And 30 days down the line, I don't have that pain now. So this is what I have experienced. Then the journey started. So I started doing needling first on relatives, naturally. Uh, nobody would believe. Uh, people might feel that you are doing something new, which is maybe nonsense. Then close patients who were having faith in me. And then I started offering all because it was giving good results. But my price patient, from where I decided, no, I have to take it to the uh, next level and to the patients. 
is that in 2012, uh, in Apollo, I was referred uh, a patient from an orthopedic surgeon who had severe back and leg pain. He had undergone three spine surgeries. One spine surgery, then redo, and then infection, so third. And then some pain consultant had sincerely tried seven different uh, this thing, uh, blocks consecutively without a single uh, result. Now, wife, uh, patient was very poor and she was exhausted monetarily, mentally. So I explained her, see, I do this. If you want, I can help you. She was on all possible medications. And you will not believe. She had complete pain relief in three sessions. Not only that, she joined the job. Her brother-in-law had a shop of Agarbati, and she used to sit and sell it. She started doing that. This stimulated me to do further and further work. So I started using it in different pain situations. By now, it's nine years, more than 10,000 patients, and many of them have got good results. I don't want to say that this is a magic wand and you can treat anything and everything. No. In certain high-end patients, this does not work. Probably there, I may be at fault. I may not be able to understand the pain properly or understand the source properly. That might be the reason. Or the phenomena itself may be weak enough to uh, not address a high-end kind of case. Right. <clears throat> I published one case report, Foxidania. Uh, hypodermic needle in coccidinia and soon people started taking interest in it. As of now, I have treated patients of discogenic pain, perceptogenic pain, vertebrogenic pain, yes, vertebrogenic pain, myofascial pain, osteoarthritis pain, plantar fasciitis or other heel pain, tennis elbow, periarthritis shoulder, two patients in TRPS as well, post-surgical pain. Again, I say, do I mean to call, uh, do I mean to say that I, I can treat all patients? This is magic when, or I am great? No. What I want to emphasize is this is a useful modality, really giving excellent results in number of patients, and this needs further and further study, further and further usage to give us feedback as to how we can modify and improvise on this so that a lot of patients can be helped who are poor. Do we think it can replace all existing treatment? Not at all. I have done yesterday only two image guided procedures. One ultrasound guided procedures. Why? Because A, some of them never opted for this. Two, some of them were not ready that this new treatment, I don't know how it is going to work. And one, when he got it done, he said, okay, I have a so, injection. So, there are a lot of factors in practice which help us or does not help us, do not help us in taking a particular modality further. But I tell you, it really works in number of patients, many of them. So, what I think now is, and I think all our uh, learned audience would like to scratch head is, we look into the change in anatomy as a reason of pain, but it may not be showing all. Change in physiology, which is a well-known concept, we know hypersensitization, right? Hypersensitization may be the root cause in many. And that is why some people just give repetitive plain local anesthetic block and patient get better. We have seen and we have heard Dr. Goresh giving plain local in the periphery calling it sodium cellar gate block. And even I use it day in and out. I today gave itself to my neighbor's wife. Excellent result. Why it works? Probably we are tackling a change in physiology rather than change in anatomy. And when the change in anatomy is dominant, probably this may not be working. Now points of insertion. When I am talking of points of insertion, I'm sorry, I may not be detailed and elaborate in showing you how I do it in every patient because time is short. Second, I have noticed that when people listen and try to go and try and uh, do it, probably they may not be able to completely implement my philosophy. And that is why they may not get results. 
and then this modality may lose interest in the minds of train consumer so i'm telling you my brief idea as to how i do it first is proper diagnosis of source of pain is must this is the first thing whether it is particular disc particular facet or combined or muscle whatever second thing is to consider its dermatome coverage and third thing i see is other active trigger points as well there will be secondary trigger points many times i used to do only dermatome and i never used to get results then i started adding trigger points and i started getting results so i am also improvising on that but i have seen excellent results with this new modality <clears throat> see this is the kind of needle i put you can see this is a simple half inch 26 gauge hypodermic needle and see how flat it is like the way we take the vein it is not perpendicular it is not perpendicular as we do it in dry needling for uh, inserting in the muscle this is not at all perpendicular to the skin i just go in the skin and i put it right briefly i am not here to do propaganda but i am here to try and tell you how people feel so i'll just show you one or two reviews or you may see where you can see the reviews i may not even show but this will tell us this is this is my page google page and you here if you click naturally you will see the reviews which all of us have only one i would like to show to you is our own pathologist dr sanjay gupta i am a doctor of transfusion medicine i was in bed rest with lower back ache and leg pain and a pain gap and painkillers uh, dr ashi gave me dermatome needle next day i joined my day, day, day routine activities and this is true i am completely he was down on weight for hello hello ashish sir let go am i audible yes dr varsha you are audible okay probably he has internet breakdown Can you call him and just inquire? He might be just trying to wait for me. Call him. He got disconnected. There's some. Uh... Charging issue with laptop. We joining back.
screen is visible someone please reply screen is visible yes dr varsha is it it's visible okay so varsha sir is joining soon i have shared the screen yes sorry sorry there was some technical snag yes sir please go on am i am i audible yes yes you are audible should i go to oh. next slide or just go yeah yeah no no i i'll, I'll do that uh, let let us share let i'll share it yeah okay and you know Disable screen sharing. Disable screen sharing. Okay, I I have to make you co-host. I I have to make you co-host later. Okay, sir. 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 Fine. This is a small video. Doctors. Hello, Rajiv sir. Are you speaking? Yes. Again, problem at his end. I think. Yeah. Hello, Doctor Rajiv. we can't hear you <clears throat> dr rajiv probably your bandwidth is low so i will share it for you you just be on a you know speaker mode that will work Yeah, we are just waiting for half a minute. we can see you in a small frame and it's not running i guess it's a static picture am sure, i right can you start now when is the permission enabled have lagna so just scroll down and zoom enable kar is zoom back was zala share okay can you see the screen madam yes screen is visible i mean i mean this is a understanding which probably and is the sound audible no sound is not audible only but to play during call sound ban me karo setting oh you you please acha call sound hoga nahi nahi zoom call chalu hai anyway madam let me close no problem these are doctors videos which probably were telling uh, how they have experienced this particular modality so we can go ahead with closing my ppt zoom zoom click okay sir i will just open this particular video it is opening in my screen okay so we can listen to that can you see that yes we can see that we can hear that if you stop sharing i can come to that
okay no but uh, the video may not play I, because it might be having a link to my computer no it plays i just checked we'll have once we'll have check once okay is my screen visible priya yes dr varsha it's visible video is audible no स्टोरीज What yeah. was her complaints and how did you treated her? In short, uh, yeah, see, we would really uh, like to hear that. Fine, fine, fine. See, uh, the first video which you saw, there were five or six videos of doctors which have posted. The first video which you saw was basically a dentist having severe neck pain and arm pain. Actually, she had five six disc bulge and mild nerve compression on the right side. Now she was already on the treatment of orthopedic surgeon since almost a month. She was wearing collar, and her husband is a radiologist. So after a lot of medications, also she was not getting relief. So the radiologist came to me. He said, "Sir, कुछ भी इसमें हो सकता है क्या?" But I said, "ले क्या देखते हैं क्या है?" When I saw, it was more of facetal pain than actually discogenic pain, and there was a lot of trapezius spasm. So I did hypodermic needling for right sided five six and six seven facet and trapezius. I did it in two sessions weekly once, and second session she stopped using the collar. Third session she was up and out. She started working her routine dental work. Second patient which I have quoted is an orthopedic surgeon. Hello, can you listen me? Yes, we can Hello? listen to you. Can you listen me? Yes, yeah. we can. Yeah. Second was an orthopedic surgeon who had pain in the outer side of the thigh, and it was fitting into nothing but irritable tract pain. And uh, there I did needling, and in surprisingly only one session he got relief. And the pain was since two months. Orthopedic surgeon himself. Right. Third was a case uh, of a gynecologist who had thoracic facet joint pain, for which everything was done, including RF at some place, and there was no relief. And here we did simple needling in three sessions, and the video at the end is concluded by that doctor. and he is so happy probably he has sent me more than 15 patients himself so there are innumerable stories i am not here to showcase that i am great but i want to stress that yes this modality has proven excellent for those who want to really learn it i am planning i might have one day session wherein morning one or two hours i may talk about it as to how to do it and then i'm going to have a cam because we all know in our pain clinic we don't have queue of patients at least i don't have four or five or six or max seven eight patients we are happy but for them i can arrange 70 to 100 patients cam wherein i can show them and they can learn so thank you very much madam again for allowing me to talk about this new concept Thank you. Deepi ma'am, can you address the questions and discussion? Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Harshe. Yeah. It was very informative, and uh, I agree with you that if you uh, tell the procedure in this session, the people start practicing uh, with inadequate knowledge. Correct. Yeah. Uh, the, this is the really good way of presentation, and uh, I thank you so much. And uh, we will. we would like to move on to the next speaker because we are short of time and we will take the questions yes uh, in uh, in yes. the yes yes this is small letter i i go upar niche 
Anyways, Priya is known to everyone in Pune. She is a very eminent pain physician. Okay, I will read from my side. Yes, yes. We we'll start the introduction. Introduction. In my life. Yeah. Uh, Priya has done her MD and DNB anesthesiology fellowship in chronic pain medicine and fellow of Indian Academy of Pain Medicine. She is a consultant pain specialist at Sigma Spine and Pain Clinic, Asian Ortho Spine Clinic, Sanchetti Hospital, Golden Care Hospital, and she has published two research papers in international journals. It's our uh, it's really honor to invite. Dr. Priya Rathi to deliver a talk on needling. Over to Priya. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kirti, for the kind introduction. I just share my screen. I would like to thank SSPT for giving me this opportunity to present on this very important topic. that is muscle physiology and pathophysiology of myofascial pain so uh, we all know that skeletal muscles comprise of nearly half of the body's weight and it is the only organ in the body that is not linked to any of the medical specialty so seaman has uh, said that muscle is an orphan organ but uh, let me tell you that muscle carries equal importance at any other pain generator in the body why i am saying this is because muscle nociceptive afferents are effective in inducing the neuroplastic changes in the spinal dorsal horn it activates a uh, cingulate gyrus which mediates the emotional and affective component of the pain and muscle pain is strongly inhibited by the descending pathways prolonged muscle inputs can lead to uh, misinterpretation in the cns which leads to allodynia hyperalgesia expansion of the receptive fields so with this uh i would like to say that uh, muscle pain is also known as fibrositis interstitial myofibritis myogenesis non articular rheumatism myofascial pain idiopathic myalgia myofasciitis perineuritis myodysneuria and fibromyalgia but uh, the term which suits us the most is myofascial pain so going to basic history uh kelgren was the first person to describe uh refer pain from the muscle these are the uh, basic a uh, few history points but uh, we should know that uh, muscle pain has been described from 16th century janet travel and drinsler in 1942 janet travel was a cardiologist who had special interest in musculoskeletal pain uh, in fact myo uh, myofascial pain so uh, they observed that fascia generated similar referral patterns as contractile elements so the term myofascial pain was applied and that term is uh, continued till now finder uh, coined the term trigger point simmons and travel uh, they laid down the energy crisis hypothesis which i'll be explaining in the next slide sigder et al in 2008 have said that trigger points can be identified by ultrasound and sonoelastography in ultrasound they are seen as hypoechoic structures and under sonoelastography they are being uh, seen as uh, stiff bands so what is this energy crisis hypothesis whenever there is trauma or damage to sarcoplasmic reticulum or cell membrane there is release of calcium into the sarco uh, into the cytoplasm this causes activation of actin and myosin further reducing the atp atp is now required for the muscle relaxation so once atps are less it again causes impaired calcium from leading to increased calcium so this vicious cycle continues 
Now, uh, what are trigger points? Trigger points are the hyper-irritable spots in the skeletal muscle that are associated with hypersensitive palpable nodule in the tort band. Trigger points are associated with somatic conditions as well as visceral conditions. So, what are somatic conditions can show uh, trigger points? Almost all the somatic condition can have trigger points like radiculopathy, failed back surgery syndrome, joint dysfunction, disc pathologies, tendinosis, craniomandibular dysfunction, headache, Certain neurological pain conditions, uh, which are considered to be purely neurological, can also have uh, trigger points as their presentation, like carpal tunnel syndrome, trigeminal neuralgia, post herpetic neuralgia, and complex regional pain syndrome. In visceral pain conditions, uh, trigger points may be present in pelvic pain, dysmenorrhea, endometriosis, interstitial cystitis, irritable bowel syndrome gallbladder and urinary bladder calcula and prostatinia. Just uh, trigger points are present in all these conditions, just that in clinic we uh, tend to overlook those trigger points. So uh, here are certain uh, examples of the patients wherein I treated them with ultrasound guided dry needling considering uh, the examination of the trigger points in these uh, neurological pain patients. So this was the patient of trigeminal neuralgia who had presented to me with shock-like pain and she had background constant pain also. Her mouth opening was reduced quite a bit. I did 6 to 7 sessions of dry needling for her and this is how she had presented with, uh, this was the picture after 3 sessions. Her mouth opening had increased uh, quite a bit. Her pain level had reduced uh, by 50% and with Six to seven sessions, she she was much better, around eighty percent better. So this is the patient of uh, post spine surgical pain. Patient had a um, severe spasm of erector spinae, quadratus lumborum, and psoas. Who improved with six to seven sessions of dry needling under ultrasound. So CRPS, which is considered to be pure neurological uh, condition, but it is in fact a uh, Tremendous spasm of the muscles along with neuropathic component in clinical setup. So, this was my patient who had CRPS after uh, four surgeries for his radius fracture. He presented to me with uh, shoulder hand syndrome. His movements at wrist, elbow, and shoulder were tremendously uh, painful and reduced. His uh, muscles were atrophic. You can see uh, the deltoid atrophy here. After 8 to 10 sessions of uh, dry needling, he has improved to this much. Here, 90 degree of abduction was not possible, but here it is, he is going to 180 degrees. Bulk is also regained. So now, uh, this trigger point's existence is being confirmed by magnetic resonance elastographic. These trigger points can have motor phenomenon like weakness, stiffness, restricted range of motion, disturbed motor function. It can have sensory phenomena like allodynia, hyperalgesia, referred pain, peripheral sensitization and central sensitization. It can have autonomic phenomena also uh, like vasodilatation, vasoconstriction, lacrimation and piloerection. Trigger points could be of two types, active or latent. These active trigger points are spontaneously painful and it can have motor, sensory and autonomic phenomena along with it. Latent trigger points are painful only when they are palpated. Plus, it can have all the features uh, like motor, sensory and autonomic phenomena. Now, to understand the uh, trigger points, we need to know the basic muscle physiology. Now, each muscle cell is known as muscle fiber. So, this is whole, whole thing is muscle fiber. It is uh, this, uh, lined by sarcolima. Inside the sarcolima is the sarcoplasm and multiple parallelly running myofibrils. These myofibrils are interconnected. Now, uh, the microstructure of the myofibril is like this. Functional unit of my, uh, muscle is sarcomere. What is the sarcomere? Sarcomere is the part of myofibril that is present in between the Z lines. Now, these Z lines are formed by the protein called myopalladin. 
This myopalladin holds uh, actin filaments parallelly, and in between the actin filaments, that these thick filaments are myosin filaments. This actin and myosin filaments are held together by the protein called titin, and titin is the uh, largest vertebrate protein. This titin uh, forms a gel-like structure at Z line when muscle undergoes contraction. Titin forms the gel-like structure at the Z line when, when muscle undergoes contraction. Now, when we see under electron microscope, the part of sarcomere which contains only actin filaments is seen as a light band. So, we call it I band. Then the part of sarcomere which contains actin as well as myosin is called as A band and the part which contains only myosin is known as H zone. The length of H zone, H zone is completely obliterated when muscle contraction happens. So, why this uh, details about everything? Because uh, it has certain clinical implications which I will be explaining later. Now, actin-myosin interaction happens only when this tropin and tropomyosin complex is being bound by calcium. So, when calcium binds with the troponin tropomyosin complex, these myosin heads can interact with the actin. So, uh, usually the myosin heads are like this. You can consider this to be myosin head and the movement happens like this. So, once myosin head moves, it, can, it brings the actin filament to the center of the sarcomere and the contraction happens. So, what are the implications in the myofascial pain? This MTRPs can have damaged sarcomere assembly. Myosin filaments may have broken actin titin barrier and myosin may have got stuck in the gel formed by sticky titin at the Z line in case of myofascial trigger points. So, uh, Clinically, what we see is whenever uh, there is tremendous muscle spasm, these contractile elements of the muscle, which are seen as the red uh, cells, are being replaced by the fibrotic tissue. Here, uh, this is the uh, picture wherein uh, see, this is a picture of the muscle in CRPS, dramatic presentation in CRPS, wherein the contractile element is being replaced by the fibrotic elements. So under ultrasound, we can uh, see these findings. So, this is the ultrasound picture of the normal forearm, wherein we can see radius, we see ulna, and the muscles are being seen as a nice uh, boundaries of the muscles are being seen. Muscles, normal muscles are seen as a back, black background against which white fibrous tissues are being seen. But in case of CRPS, this uh, the muscle bulk is reduced as well as you can see the contractile elements are being replaced by the fibrous tissues. This is a microscopic picture of MTRP uh, wherein we can see uh, this A and C pictures are the normal muscle fibers. This is a cross-sectional, this is the longitudinal view. In cross-sectional, we can see nice polygonal uh, muscle cells but in MTRPs, the clumping happens. Lengthwise, uh, here parallel muscle fibers are being seen, but when in MTRPs, these are seen as inflating and tapering fibers, and uh, there is abnormal aggregation of the muscle fibers, which shows short cracks, and uh, there are large gaps between the muscle fibers. Here, we do not see any gaps, but in uh, MTRPs, that is myofascial trigger points, these gaps are being seen. So, about neuromuscular junction. So what is this neuromuscular junction? It is a uh, junction where nerve ending meets the motor end plate. Right? The space between it is called as uh, synapse. So, whenever the action potential reaches the nerve fiber, it causes opening of the calcium channels at the nerve terminal. Once the calcium enters into nerve terminals, the uh, acetylcholine is released from the nerve terminals into the synaptic vesicles. This acetylcholine binds to acetylcholine receptors leading to influx of the sodium. This sodium, once it, uh, it is into the cells, leads to depolarization and uh, activation of the process, uh, activation, uh, contraction of the muscles. So, what is the implication in myofascial pain? 
there is spontaneous electrical activity at uh, myofascial trigger points and it occurs due to excess of acetylcholine at the motor end plates now to understand this we need to know the integrated trigger point hypothesis which is the most evidence based hypothesis right now for the myofascial things so increased acetylcholine at neuromuscular junction it leads to opening of the sodium channels in sarcoplasmic reticulum this further leads to increased calcium uh, release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum which further causes persistent muscle contraction with myofascial trigger points there is compromise of the blood vessels leading to hypoxia and uh, reduction of the ph and which further causes muscle pain and dysfunction and there is a good evidence which says that oxygen saturation in myofascial trigger points is far below the normal values so uh, with this uh, biochemical mile of mtrps is being well studied by jaysha so what he has done is he has invented a device called microdialysis pump microdialysis pump is being attached to 30 gauge hollow needle this that needle is used for the uh, needling of the myofascial trigger point so with the same needle sample is being collected uh, sample is being collected Sam uh, samples of the plasma for uh, before during and after the uh, needling process is being collected so what he has found is in myofascial trigger points ph is low protons bradykinin substance p cgrp tnf alpha interleukin 1 beta 6 and 8 5ht and norepinephrine are all high so with this uh, i would like to go to next concept called local twitch response local twitch response is a involuntary reflex contraction of the muscle fibers within the taut band it is elicited by manually stroming or needling the taut band it can be observed visually it can be recorded electromyographically or it can be visualized on the ultrasound and it is important to note here that local twitch response uh, when we see under ultrasound we can see multiple local twitch responses when a muscle is needled but all those responses are not seen visually so for dry needling to be effective we have to have ultrasound uh, for the procedure so here is a video wherein when i am introducing the needle patient is having a large local twitch response and a small local twitch response here so you can see there is a good response first and the second one the second one was not seen visually so it is not always important to just hunt for the uh, local twitch response whenever we are doing dry needling blindly with this i would like to thank you all for patient listening thank you thank you priya it was very informative uh, so we will move on to next speaker dr kailash and we will take the questions in the end uh, it is very nice to introduce dr kailash vaghmare who is a pain physician from sholapur he has done an mhs fellowship from mumbai certificate course in yoga from sabitri bai phule pune university conducted by kaivalya dham yoga institute lonawala he has won first prize in pain quiz at icra pain kolkata he has done the poster presentation at iss pcon 2018 needle induced yoga so i take privilege to invite dr kailash to talk on dry needling over to kailash kindly unmute him
Hello, am I audible to everybody? Yes. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Kailash, you are audible. Uh, yeah. Uh, I would request Dr. Varsha to please start my slides. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Varsha. Uh, I would like to thank uh, both the speakers who have already spoken about the necessary physiology and uh, their own techniques or their uh, methods of doing dry needling. I would be interested in uh, talking about how it works. Next slide. Uh, Brief history of dry needling. Dry deep, deep dry needling for treating trigger points first introduced by Zek physician Karel Levitt in 1979. Baldry developed a version called superficial dry needling in which the needle is inserted about 5 to 10 mm into the tissue above the trigger point. In the 1980s, Changan of Vancouver, Canada, which, which moved away from using only trigger points. He termed the elicited localized twitch response as the stimulation and call it intramuscular stimulation. Deep dry needling is superior when compared to superficial dry needling in treatment of myofacial pain. Next slide. Basis of dry needling, according to Changan's hypothesis, was Cannon and Rosenbluth's law of denervation, and also in not according to uh, Changan, but Hilton's law is also important basis for dry needling. Next slide. Next slide, please. Cannon and Rosenbluth recognize four types of, sorry, uh, this law states when a unit is destroyed in series of different neurons and increase irritability to chemical agents develop in isolated structures, the effect being maximal in part directly denervated. Nerves show peripheral and central sensitization, which affects not only sensory nerves, but also motor and autonomic nerves. Muscles show increased sensitivity to acetylcholine, leading to spontaneous electrical activity, seen as fasciculations or spasm, which generate pain. Next slide. The amplitude they recognize four types of sensitivities. The amplitude of response is unchanged, but the course is prolonged, super duration of response. The threshold for stimulating response is lower than normal, hyper excitability. Lesson stimuli that do not have to exceed the threshold produce responses of normal amplitude, that is increased susceptibility, and the ability of tissue to respond in augmented super is augmented that is super reactivity next slide please they also showed that the super sensitivity can occur in many structures of the body including skeletal muscles smooth muscles spinal neurons sympathetic ganglia adrenal glands sweat glands and brain cells Furthermore, they showed that denervated structures overreact to many physical inputs, including stress and stretch and pressure. Wherein now here comes the new definition of pain in 2020 by the special. Next, next slide. ISP new definition states 
the definition has been changed from an unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage and is expanded upon by addition of six key notes for a valuable context next slide the six key notes include pain is always a personal experience that is influenced to varying degrees of biological psychological and social factors pain and nociception are different phenomenon pain cannot be inferred solely from activity in sensory neurons here only sensory neurons should not be taken for granted other receptors such as stretch receptors proper receptors touch pressure all are important we have a further discussion go for the next slide now importance was that only sensory neurons are not necessary for pain other than those receptors are also important next slide please super sensitivity super sensitivity in autonomic pathways increase blood vessel tone of virtually all tissues and cause secondary pain by structural disintegration following denervation the total collagen in soft and skeletal tissues is reduced replacement collagen also has fewer cross links and is markedly weaker than normal mature collagen because collagen provides the strength of ligaments tendon cartilage and bones it contributes to many degenerative conditions in the weight bearing and activity stress parts of the body tendinitis cuff tears epicondylitis ruptured tendons and so forth here i want to stress that a degeneration process is normally going on in the body of a person of around after the mid, uh, around 30 years of age and the, this degeneration will lead to all these things so we have to remember degeneration as a part and parcel of our life and this affects for the super sensitivity caused next slide please nerve degeneration the two main types of nerve fiber degeneration recommended them were axonal degeneration axon that leads to secondary breakdown of myelin sheath where cause is focal trauma the term valerian degeneration is used and where axonal degeneration occurs due to disease other than trauma axonal neuropathy is used segmental demyelination is patchy breakdown of myelin sheets limited to individual segments with relative sparing of axis cylinder here i want to stress that if we uh, do b12 levels in the patient with pain i often see patients having more than 2000 picograms of uh, levels of b12 in their blood it is nothing but the breakdown of myelin sheath which is recognized as b12 otherwise the patient is uh, deficient in b12 but it is mistaken as b12 and counted so the levels are too high now why to initiate treatment with dry needling it, it is based on sunderland sunderland's hypothesis where 5 degrees of injury were there but i want to stress on two in first degree loss of conductivity of axis cylinders at the site of injury without any grossly apparent break in continuity of structures comprised in the nerve trunk and regeneration is relatively effective even when the injury reaches grade 4 when there is damage to the axon connective tissue and perineum the nerve remains practically intact but regeneration is poorly oriented and less effective so initiating treatment with dry needling is a good treatment for patients of chronic pain or any pain next slide please why to keep needles for 50 minutes uh, usually i do treatments uh, uh, usually other people do for 20 or 30 minutes but i keep it for 50 minutes because it is possible that relief is the result of stimulation induced analgesia stimulation of the large diameter fibers or the displacement of nociceptors by fibrotic tissue current of injury causes a decline in denervation hypersensitivity 
and this stimulation applied continuously is reported to be more effective than stimulation applied intermittently whenever we do dry needling a patient the patient feels the pain and that is the pain is a type of current which feels or the trigger point uh, where you hit it gives pain at a distance point where the other inactive trigger point is initiated by that current and so continuously giving that for 15 minutes helps to reduce the sessions of the patient for dry needling so i keep the needles for 15 minutes next guns radiculopathy model uh, dr priya has nicely explained this but still uh, the affected area dermatome the myotome and sclerotome all have to be taken into consideration wherein uh, the manifestations are vasomotor skin is cooler mottling is seen there is increased sweating there may be goosebumps there may be hyperesthesia neurogenic edema there may be myalgic hyperalgesia tenderness over motor points increased muscle tones spasms and swelling and effusions in in few cases next uh here the figure shows the normal muscles from origin to insertion and now the next the shortened muscle with palpable tender painful bands they have demonstrated beautifully here and they have shown that enthesopathic thicken tendons happen towards the attachments therefore the range of motions are reduced unless we reduce the contractions in the muscles which are caused by the mtrps or the painful taut bands are released the patient will not get relief shortened muscles means pain and if the length is restored then the movements are also restored next slide uh the shortened paraspinal muscles across an intervertebral disc space can compress the disc and impinge on the nerve root the above picture shows the normal disc wherein the nerve root is not affected but when the muscle gets shortened shortened paraspinal muscles it compresses the disc and this may impinge the nerve root next slide please now coming to hilton's law hilton's law exposed by john hilton in a series of medical lectures given in 1862 62 is the observation that in the study of anatomy the nerve supplying the muscles extending directly across and acting at a given joint not only supplies the muscle but also innervate the joint joint means synovium of the joint and the skin overlying the muscle next slide please according to hilton's law in the spine if facet joint is having arthropathy the nerve supplying facet joint will also supply muscles moving the joint and skin over the joint so affected medial branch irritates the muscle supplied by the medial branch multifidus and interspinalis and causes shortening due to spasm thus generating pain in the affected area autonomic changes start to set in the skin ranging from prophedema to cutaneous hyperesthesia now coming to theories that work may be one or all for dry needling uh, theory number 1 needles in the muscle stimulates sensory cortex in the homunculus activates thalamus and limbic system activates that activates for the midbrain and the periaqueductal gray matter which stimulates the descending inhibitory tracts to release endogenous opiates to decrease pain now in chronic pain what happens is the irritable nerve contracts the muscle 
blood vessels compress leads to nutritional deprivation muscle cell death leads to fibrosis muscle length shortening happens vicious cycle continues range of motion decreases along with pain next slide after dry needling needle breaks the fibrosis elicits a jump sign and muscle grips the needle acetylcholine stores get depleted at the nm junction loosens grip of the muscle over the needle relaxation of muscular facial compartment circulation is restored substance p is washed out and pain decreases next slide also the needle tip stimulates satellite cells at the basement membrane of the muscle fibrils and helps them to multiply this is supported by nutritional supply which was increased due to increase in blood supply containing platelet derived growth factors it's like platelet rich plasma therapy been done within the body uh, it is my own thinking increase in muscle mass restores muscle length and thus decreases pain and increases range of motions next slide please uh, now coming to the neuroplasticity concept for dry needling we all know that uh, pain travels at 2 to 30 meter per seconds and proprioception receptors which can stimulate when stimulated travels at 120 meter per second now when i do 50 minutes stimulation it is 3000 seconds so pain travels per second is 13 into 3000 for 50 minutes it travels for 90 kilometers for one needle it is for pain and for other sensation here i have only considered proprioception i have not included touch pressure or temperature so 120 into 3000 is 360 kilometers all this is for one one needle and supposing the human body is only of maximum 2 meters and all are less than about 1.5 or 1.6 or 1.7 1.8 at max meters in their body this circuits are formed continuously and against 90 and uh, against 90 360 is four times the circuits which they are formed and that is too faster so according to gate theory other sensations we know the pain sensations so they are able to change or dampen the circuits of brain which were creating creating the pain now here neuroplasticity changes it and helps in reducing pain circuits and decreasing chronic pain next slide please the new concept here dry needling stimulates many dormant cortical pathways which are stimulated by proprioceptive and various receptors leading to sensory feedback which brings psychophysiological relaxation and pain relief by reducing stress anxiety and depression now coming to my last slide almost here proposed mechanism of ultrasound guided dry needling has been proposed by dr lakshmi vas my teacher from ashirwad institute of pain management and research next slide here they have described that ultrasound guided dry needling of my facial trigger points will lead to elicitation of local twitch reflex in muscle bands by needle entry after relay of the occurrence of the ltr to the spinal cord reflex relaxation of muscle occurs continuation of muscle relaxation beyond needle removal possibly due to persistent needle tract in the muscle reduction and eventual cessation of the continuous spinal sensitization due to loss of nociceptor input which will lead to pain relief with reduction in opioid medication relief and also relief of disability will occur this is what i had to say about how dry needling works rather the role of dry needling in pain practice have already been described by the previous speakers i am uh, here to tell you that 
the first thing which i offer to my patients would be dry needling if the patient considers it and if he doesn't want any interventions like injections with steroids and uh, does not want any invasive uh, uh, radio frequency treatments i i offer them a non invasive pulse radio frequency and along with it dry needling and this has given me very good results and they the method with which i do and keep it for 50 minutes the patients don't require the second session in most of the cases almost 99% of my patients are cured with one session of my treatment because i keep the needles for double the time of others this gives a very good results thanks a lot thank you kailash yeah very good presentation now topic yes. is open for discussion thank you ma'am anybody is having a question to three speakers please go ahead i have a question to dr priya hello dr priya i just want to ask Hi. her that in crps actually the whole limb is involved the complete muscle from shoulder joint to the lower end distal end are involved so which muscle do you target in that uh, see uh, the sessions are being uh, conducted in the form of uh, so one day we uh, target flexors the other day we target the extensors and the neck so if patient is lying supine say in case of uh, upper limb crps one day i would target uh, deltoid biceps and flexor aspect of forearm the next day i would ask the patient to lie down in lateral position i would target the neck muscles and the extensor aspect okay got it yeah thank you it was wonderful presentation by all the three speakers great thank you it's not a pity you would like to conclude the session yeah should any i conclude questions? the session yeah any questions or any comments you could see in the chat box okay nothing as of now okay concluding the mark on the session please yeah okay so finally it was great presentation by each of the speaker it will definitely help each and every pain practitioner in present era being pain physicians we need to think beyond mri ct scan and now conduction study luckily musculoskeletal ultrasonography and elastography have been emerged as promising diagnostic modalities for muscles ultrasound shows heterogeneous hyperechoic muscles muscle fibrosis and altered microvascular flow on doctor while elastography shows stiffness of particular muscles so these two diagnostic tools are and will be the choice of investigations in near future of pain practice as each of it talks about culprit muscles as a reason for chronicity of pain and this is the reason why we should learn scientifically about dry needling because dry needling is and will be the integral part of pain management thank you very much okay thank you dr thank you, i could see many comments uh, you know scrolling through the chat box and uh, everyone is so eager to learn more about dry needling already if you are practicing and this session has given such a good insight to newer aspect of hypodermic needling by rajiv rajiv harsha sir and uh, dry needling by our own priya and kailash so now i would like to end the session with uh, thanks giving so thanks to all speakers for excellent insight and presentations and most importantly following timeline so it was you know uh, very much within reach of every speaker and organizers keeping it compact at the same time giving full information that was wonderful part of it moderator dr kirti pawar madam thanks a lot being uh, taking out time from your busy schedule i would like to thank 
for this platform online zoom platform by society for study of pain pune and anesthesia tv who has taken this session live on five platforms at a time so it is really commendable job on their behalf and our sspp team who is managing technical aspect as well as you know getting the flyer done and all the formalities dr vivek dr sanjog dr vachani so i would really like to thank my sspp academic wing and last but not the least our ever enthusiastic audience giving whole hearted comments and appreciation and initiating discussion with nice inputs and questions so i would like to conclude the meeting here and every yeah, what i would like to say yes, something please yes sir please. yeah yeah uh, first of all excellent uh, way of conducting the whole session right uh, crisp time to time now this is 9:26 in my mobile 9:30 i'll be with my dinner so yes. fantastic i mean uh, the commendable job and the topics were good speakers were naturally everybody shared very nicely and audience was good interactive and uh, 100 marks to you for nice initiative i mean pain society conducting regular uh, zoom meetings or virtual meeting is something required and in coming days i hope you will take more and more new topics to uh, come up on the stage those who want are interested in hypodermic needling you may call ask them to register with you whenever i plan out a camp okay. i'll one day session i'll let you know nice right? sir, thank you very much for inviting me thanks a lot thank you sir okay good night everyone please good night. stop good the night. recording now recording stopped okay now you'll get the option to upload it on cloud okay so the recording will be uploaded Nandita Mehta Ma'am is there. Pratima Ma'am is there. Wow! Right from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, I could see the audience. So happy to have them all.